Okay, quarter to nine here on the program. Let's turn our attention to health issues. Non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, stroke, hypertension, diabetes and cancer are growing at an alarming rate in South Africa. These so-called silent killers have seen people perceived as being healthy, harboring life-threatening illnesses. Just last year, for the very first time, Stats SA reported that these diseases were the most common cause of mortality in the country. Now that's, that's very, very scary. Let's get a little bit of insight. We're joined in studio by Dr. Ngoba Tsabedze. He is the academic and clinical head of cardiology at both Charlotte Mateke Johannesburg Academic Hospital as well as Witz. Good to have you in studio. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we look at this now in terms of cardiovascular uh, heart-related illnesses taking over from something as TB. I mean, TB used to be one of the greatest uh, causes and blames of death here in the country. Why the shift? What's going on? Yeah, so, so that's very true. I think for a very long time, um, in the past 10, 20 years, um, TB, tuberculosis, uh, HIV, a lot yeah. of infectious diseases dominated um, the burden of disease in terms of our health uh, facilities. But over the last 10 years, um, with a lot of urbanization, uh, a lot of a change in lifestyles um, as a lot of uh, uh, people emerge as the middle class and now can afford a lot of fast foods, uh, less work being done, can afford uh, vehicles, for example, uh, less physical activity that's occurring. There's this uh, emerging pandemic of non-communicable diseases and uh, the regions of sub-Saharan Africa, including South Africa, are really in trouble because we're going to be hit by a double whammy of both um, non-communicable diseases with this backdrop of infectious diseases. Yeah, so it really is sort of just a whole change in lifestyle. Is, yeah. that, is that kind of what, we, what we're referring to? Yeah, basically we're becoming more westernized. Yeah. In simple terms, we're becoming more westernized. And uh, as you are aware, a lot of uh, urbanization, so people migrating from rural areas, coming to urban areas, and uh, changing their lifestyles and, be, uh, and, and their diets yeah. and basically living more like Americans and Europeans. Um, and now we are uh, assuming the burdens of diseases that you see in those communities as being prominent mm. and uh, we're just not as prepared for it and aware. So if we put it in simple terms, we, we've got a lot of things on the screen right now. So it's you come into the city life and you're eating junk food, yeah, yes. fast, convenient food that's not necessarily healthy at all. Lack of exercise. You're sitting in an office behind a desk working exactly. and you're not getting out and working um, and walking, I should say. You're not doing exercise. You perhaps start smoking, picking up bad habits, start uh, living a lifestyle that if you are away from the westernized city living, you may be doing it very, very differently. And, and is that kind of what we're talking about and we are following the rest of the world when it comes to this trend exactly i, I mean you see it everywhere uh, mcdonald's a lot of fast food chains yeah. have becoming the norm and the standard uh, we, we perceive these diets as um, being uh, somewhat more uh, in interesting more exciting more uh, fashionable but actually it's very detrimental to our health yeah i mean obesity as well and i've been reading from more and more uh, studies that you know we we as South Africans are we catching up if not we are right up there yes. with some of the, uh, the the heaviest countries in the world that we as citizens are declared obese we are not healthy and our children are following suit and that's a big worry yes that's very true I think uh, if you look at the developed world where a lot of obesity um, 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 is anchored uh, for such as in the United States of America we follow very closely to them in terms of uh, the, the prevalence of obesity yet we are a developing nation and that's just a sign that uh, a lot of our people aren't informed or aware of a lot of non-communicable diseases as well as the risk factors that they can um, avert and modify to prevent them from um, contracting these illnesses. I mean, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but there's still instances where you have the fittest people. And, and, and I know we all got that story to tell, you know, he was a fit guy, she was a fit lady, she ran, she ate healthily, uh, he, he did this, went for regular checkups, and yet still had a heart attack and died. Um, I mean, 
can we only attribute it to a, an unhealthy lifestyle or is there more to it? There's definitely more to it. So there are really two aspects to it. So if you're looking at population-based statistics, you know, lifestyle, the habits, the diets that we eat, that's a huge uh, contributor to what we see at a population level. But now when you zone it into the individual, it becomes very personal. So there are two parts to it. You've got your modifiable risk factors and those that are non-modifiable. So I could be exercising, uh, eating right, um, 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 uh, doing all the things that the doctor says I should do, but you may find that I have uh, an inherent risk whereby yeah. I've got, for example, hypertension, which is a contributor. I may have a family history yes. of coronary artery disease. And in some of our Indian and Caucasian populations, there may either be genet some other form of genetic predispositions that are, exist in those families, um, which then make you highly at risk. And if you're not aware of those, as well as the symptoms of cardiovascular diseases, you're basically a sitting duck. You may think you, 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 you're good, but you're actually still at very high risk. Are there different ethnic groups that are more susceptible to heart attacks and cardiovascular diseases? Yes, definitely. So in, in, in our unit at the Charlotte Mitteke, for example, we, see, we serve a predominantly uh, state patient population, which is largely black. But mm -hmm. if you look at our coronary angiography state uh, data, 90% of those patients that we do coronary angiograms and we stent are actually Caucasians and Indians, wow. and which is a, a, an alarming twist because you'd expect us to be treating a lot of uh, patients dependent on state health care. But, but the, contrary to what this disease is actually doing, mm. where it's largely anchored in those populations. So there's definitely a huge uh, predisposition based on race. Absolutely. And then the flip also happens when you look at heart failure, which is another uh, cardiovascular disease, where it predominantly affects a lot of black patients, which is associated heavily with hypertension, also what, another silent killer. What about within, so many questions I want to ask you, because this is such a big thing, age group and the increase in women, because it was always something that you always sort of heard, you know, men have heart attacks, women, we're not so susceptible to it. But I'm finding more and more women are struggling with heart problems, dying of heart attacks, is it the increase in stress levels? Is it the increase and in, um, worsening of our lifestyles? And also age groups. People are getting younger and younger. Spot on, Leon. So what's happening is with women, um, if you look at smoking, for example, as a key risk factor, um, if you look at WHO data, a lot of the men who used to smoke, which was traditionally a male habit, mm. that has plateaued and somewhat declining. But there's still a steady increase in women oh. who, are, who are smoking more and more. And this is becoming uh, a driver to see a lot of cardiovascular disease among them. Um, the age group is definitely getting younger. The youngest that I've seen is a 30-year-old patient yeah. presenting with acute coronary syndrome requiring a stenting, which is completely absurd in terms of what the norms were. Traditionally, this disease should be seen in patients above 50 years of age. Wow. And we're now getting the shift almost by a decade um, to younger age groups. But it's really knowing all the other risk factors that one may have, such as hypertension, um, stopping the smoking, and, and addressing those risk factors to try and uh, improve your chances of actually not contracting this illness. Finally, Doc, we've got this happening on Sunday. Uh, it's uh, this Sunday, yeah, the 30th of September. It's the World Heart Day Fun Run or Walk. What, what's this all about? Yes, yeah, so this is really a vehicle. So as a department, we at, at uh, Wits University, we are at the front line of cardiovascular illnesses. And we have noted that um, there's such a scourge and we felt we need to do something about this, even if it's an awareness campaign. So what we've done is uh, decided to pioneer and anchor this fun walk run. And really the target are individuals who are not active, individuals who know they're slightly overweight, maybe they've got bad habits, they know they should be training, but they're not. And so these are the people that we really want to come out to participate in this event. It's not just a fun walk run, it's actually a screening um, 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 exercise as well, where we're going to have a lot of our staff present um, collaborating with the nursing departments and pharmacology so people can get free screening for their heights and their weights, their blood pressure, as well as a random glucose test to, 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 to see whether you are at risk for cardiovascular disease. So it's really just a vehicle to ensure that the message gets out, that this disease is on the increase yeah. and we need to own it and do something about it. Thank you for talking to us and uh, enjoy it. For those of you that can get down there and embark on this walk, go for it or fun run, whatever it may be. You've got two different categories, 5K and 8 kilometer. And uh, you can see all of the details on this pamphlet that's on your screen right now. Uh, thanks very much to Dr. Ngoba.
Tsabedze, who is the academic and clinical head of cardiology at Charlotte Marteke Johannesburg Academic Hospital, as well as WITS.